This is lesson 1-6, which is linear systems. And our essential question is, how can you find and represent solutions of systems of equations and inequalities? Okay, so our first problem is, what is the solution of the system of linear equations? So this is where you think back to Algebra 1, when you learned how to solve systems with two variables using... Um, substitution, elimination, graphing. So this one right here you can tell is set up for elimination because those two y's cancel each other out when we add them together. So if I add these two equations I get 2x equals 7 and then I divide by 2 on both sides I get x equals 3.5 and then remember to find the other variable, so you're not done when you find one, you have to go back and plug in your one variable into the, one of the original equations. So I'm gonna use x plus two y equals three. I'm gonna take the 3.5, plug it in right there. So 3.5 plus two y equals three. We solve this, we subtract the 3.5 from both sides and we get 2y equals negative 0.5. Then we divide by two. So y equals negative 0.25. So then what that represents is the intersection point between those two graphs. So that means that they intersect at the point 3.5, negative 0.25, okay? So that is two variables. So the thing about algebra two is we get into more complicated things. So we're gonna get to example three here in a second. We're gonna do three variables. Okay. So example two is an inequality, system of inequalities. So this says Malcolm earns $20 per hour mowing lawns and $10 per hour walking dogs. His goal is to earn at least $200 each week, but he can work at maximum of 20 hours per week. Malcolm must spend at least five hours a week walking his neighbor's dog. For how many hours should Malcolm work at each job in order to meet his goals? So I am going to say that X is mowing and Y is dog walking, okay? So we need to define those variables. And so then I need to say, okay, so the first thing I know is that he makes $20 for mowing lawns, so 20x, plus he makes 10 walking dogs, so 10y, and we want, he wants that to make him at least $200 each week. So we want that amount to be greater than or equal to 200 Okay, the next thing I know is he can work at a maximum of 20 hours. So that means the hours spent mowing plus the hours spent walking dogs has to be less than or equal to 20. Okay, and finally, I know that he has to walk his neighbor's dog at least five hours. So that's why. Y has to be greater than or equal equal to five. Okay, so the way that we solve inequalities is we graph them and we shade the regions where it is true. So I am going to put, so this is our hours mowing and this is our hours dog walking. Okay, and I'm gonna go by, let's make each square two. So this is four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. And I'm gonna do the same here. So this is four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. Okay, so the first one, so this is kind of hard to show you just without like, actually writing this out on paper, but we can use the cover-up method when you have stuff in standard form. So you don't actually have to solve all these for y. You can cover them up and look at where the intercepts are. So if we take that first equation, if I cover up the y, I have 20x equals 200, which means that my x-intercept 
is 10. And if I cover up the x, I have 10y equals 200, which means my y-intercept is at 20. Okay, so I'm going to draw my first line, so I'm going to put my y-intercept at 20 and my x-intercept at 10. And then I'm going to connect those with a solid line because it's or equal to. So if it's, if it's just greater than or less than, it would be a dashed line. So this is a solid line. So I'm going to connect those with a solid line. And then I'm going to use my highlighter here. And let's use yellow. And it's greater than that line because I want to know where is it going to, he's going to make more than $200. So I'm going to shade everything above that line. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to pen here. So now my next one is x plus y equals 20. So we know that the intercept for both of those would be 20 and 20. So we're going to connect those also with a solid line. But this time it has to be less than. So let's use a highlighter blue. So it's going to be everywhere that is less than that second line that I just put in. So you can sort of see right now that double shaded region is that middle triangle there. Okay, and then our final line is greater than or equal to five. So we're gonna draw a straight line over here at five and it's greater, everything above that line. So that shows me that this triangle right here is the area where all three inequalities are met, which means that my solution region is in that triple shaded region. Okay, so that is a review of solving and graphing inequalities. Okay, so here we go with our system of equations with three variables. Okay, so what I like to do with these is I like to number them. So I'm going to number this one, two, and three. So what we need to do is we need to figure out a variable that we can cancel out from two sets of two equations. So that way we create a new set. And that might sound confusing right now, but hopefully as I walk through this, it will make more sense. So I am going to pick... Um, I'm going to pick x's. Let's get rid of the x's. So if I look at equation 2 and equation 3, notice how already when I add them together, they're gonna, the x's are going to cancel out. So I'm going to take 2, which is negative x plus 2y plus z equals 3. And I'm going to take equation 3, which is x plus 2y z equals 13. Okay, so those x's cancel, so now I have 4y plus 4z equals 16. And I'm going to call this new equation I just made equation 4. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to go back to my original set of three equations, and I need to pick two new ones where I'm going to get rid of the x as well. So I am going to pick equation 1 and... If I double the second equation, then you'll notice the x's will cancel. So I'm going to do 2 times equation 2. So equation 1 is 2x plus y minus z equals negative 10. And 2 times equation 2 would be negative 2x plus 4y. Sorry, my handwriting on here is not great minus 2z equals 6. Okay, so now I'm going to add those together. The x's cancel, which is what I wanted. Then I have 5y minus... Nope, I wrote something wrong. This right here should be a plus 2. Sorry. Okay, so plus z equals negative 4. And I'm going to call that equation 5. Okay, so what I did, the whole purpose of that was I wanted to cancel the same variable so that now I have a system of two variables with two unknowns. So now I can take equation 4 and equation 5. So I have 4 is 4y plus 4z 
equals 16, and 5 is 5y plus z equals negative 4. So now I can just use plain old elimination to get rid of either y or z. So I'm going to multiply our bottom equation by 4, negative 4. So that's going to give me 4y plus 4z equals 16. So that top stays the same. The bottom is going to turn into negative 20y minus, oops, <laughs> minus 4z equals positive 16. So this would turn into negative 16y, those cancel, equals 32. So y equals negative 2. So that amount of work right there is the hardest part of all of these. So once you've found that first variable, then you just, you're back substituting into each equation. So now I know y, so I am going to plug it into, let's do equation 5 right here. So I would say 5 times negative 2 plus z equals negative 4. So that would be negative 10 plus z equals negative 4. So then we would add 10 to both sides. So that tells us that z is 6. So now I know y. I know z. Now I need to find x. So now we plug it back into one of the original equations. So let's go ahead and plug it into equation 1. So we would say 2x plus negative 2. I'm running out of space here. Let's, I'm going to move it up here so I have more space. Okay, so we'll say equation 1. So 2x plus negative 2 minus 6 equals negative 10. So if we combine terms like terms here, we have negative 8 equals negative 10. So then 2x, we add 8 to both sides, we get negative 2. So that tells us that x equals negative 1. So then just like with a system of two variables, we put it back into an ordered pair, but this one's an ordered triple. So this would be negative 1, negative 2, 6 is our final answer. Okay. As complicated as that last example is, this the final one is a lot simpler. So, it's how can we can, how can a matrix represent a system of linear equations? So, in our next lesson, I will show you a shortcut for doing that previous example that we just did. So in order to use a shortcut on our calculator, we have to be able to put a system of equations into a matrix. So in order to do that, it needs to be in standard form. So first thing we need to do with these is rewrite them so they are in the correct form. So this would be, so if we take 3y equals 1 minus 2x, we need to get the x over to the other side. So we would add 2x to both sides. So we'd have 2x plus 3y equals 1. And then on the bottom one here, we would subtract 2y from both sides. So that would give us 4x minus 2y equals 10. Okay, so now we would put this into a matrix. So... You, the matrix is just exactly the numbers you have and you leave off the variables. So this would be 2, 3, 4, negative 2. And then you draw, oops, draw a little dotted line and then you put your answers. Okay, so this right here is what we call an augmented matrix. Okay, and you can see this in the notes. If we covered up the 1, 10 and just had a 2 by 2 matrix, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, that would be just called a coefficient matrix. So again, look at the notes page that I have that goes with this so that you can see um, how this would look. So then the other thing is that this, this matrix would be a 2 by 3 
So you read it as rows by columns. So this one has two rows and three columns, okay? So then what we can do with this is we can simplify things. So one example might be if we had, let's look at this. So we have x plus, oh, I'm not going to write that part in the matrix. Okay, so we have x plus 2y equals 2. We have x minus y plus 3z equals 5. And we have 2x plus y minus 4z equals 10. So to put that in a matrix, you would get 1, 2, there's no z, so you put a 0, and then 2. And then you'd put 1, negative 1, 3, 5, and 2, 1, negative 4, 10. So that would be your matrix, which is a 3 by 4. And then what I'll show you in our next lesson is that we can reduce this so that it looks like, oh, I don't have the reduced form of this one. Okay, so anyway, you can reduce it so that it's ones and zeros. So an example might be, different example, is if I had one, zero, zero, one, and then 15 and four, that means that X, this re represents your X, is 15 and your y is 4. So in our next lesson 1.1-7 we are going to go into how we can use the calculator to do all of this matrix um, row reduction and all of that kind of stuff. But for this lesson all you need to know, I'll highlight it here, is how to take something like this and turn it into a matrix like that. Something like this and turn it into a matrix like that. So for 1-6, you're just rewriting systems of equations as a matrix. Okay? Let me know if you have any questions.